Welcome to Incident Management and ServiceNow. In today's demonstration, we'll go through the process of creating, assigning, and working on an incident ticket. Let's take a look. The incident application and its supporting modules appear here on the left navigation bar. Incidents can be initiated in a variety of ways, including from incoming emails or phone calls, or through the end user portal. Let's take a look at creating a new incident ticket from the technician's perspective. This is how the incident form appears in the base system, though the fields on this form are completely configurable. First, we have the caller information, which will be auto-populated if the incident is submitted through the end user portal or through an email message. Active Directory and LDAP integrations are very common within ServiceNow, and these insert the user information directly into the incident form. Hovering over this icon displays the user's title, name, and other information we may want to track against this incident ticket. We could also click here to see other tickets previously opened by the same caller. Category and subcategory fields allow the technician to categorize the incident. These here are configurable. For example, subcategories could be added to help to categorize the incident ticket more specifically. We also have the configuration item field, which allows us to associate any CI or asset with this incident ticket. Hovering over this icon, I can also see other related items to this configuration item, as well as who manages and supports this CI. We also have impact and urgency fields, which the system uses to calculate the priority of the ticket. This priority can trigger workflow actions related to service level agreements, or SLAs. On the right of the form are the assignment group and assign to fields. Using assignment rules, we can automate the assignment of tickets based on the values in other fields on the form. For example, we can set this up to automatically assign a ticket that has a category of software to the software team. An individual can be specified in the assign to field, or a group can triage the tickets that are assigned to them. The short description field is where the end user or the technician can provide more details about the incident. This search knowledge icon allows the technician to search for knowledge base articles related to the ticket. If a relevant knowledge article is found, the technician can attach the article to the ticket, thus triggering an email message to the caller with the article attached. Let's go ahead and save the ticket from here. We also have the ability to communicate directly with the caller by entering information into the additional comments field. This triggers an email message back to the caller with the updated information. The work notes field, on the other hand, is not visible to end users. It allows the IT department to add internal notes to the incident. And here, at the bottom, we have what we call related lists, which allow us to view other information related to this particular incident. For example, here are SLAs pertaining to this ticket, and we can see the stages of the SLA as well as the remaining time before the SLA is breached. From here, we can update this ticket, which will trigger an email message to the person named in the Assigned To field and start the incident management process. We could also right-click on the title bar here to create a related problem, change, defect, or enhancement record. This has been a brief overview of incident management in ServiceNow. You can try it out yourself by clicking on the incident application in the left navigation bar. Thanks for watching.